the Maha Nirvana Tantra is the Tantra of Great Liberation. Maha means great and Nirvana is liberation. This Tantra opens up as many Tantras do with Devi asking Shiva questions related to her concern about entering the Kali Yuga. According to Hindu scriptures, reality cycles into four yugas or epochs and so we move through these cycles starting with the Satya Yuga, the Golden Age, which is 4,000 divine years long and then the Treta Yuga, the Silver Age, which is 3,000 divine years long then the Dwapara Yuga, the Bronze Age, which is 2,000 years long and the Kali Yuga, the Iron Age, which is 1,000 years long In the opening chapters, she starts describing how the men of the ages acted in the uh, various yugas. In the Satya Yuga, um, she praises how wonderful they were. So, I will read some of this passage. She says, O Bhagavan, Lord of all, greatest among those who are versed in Dharma, Thou in former ages in thy mercy didst through Brahma reveal the four Vedas, which are the propagators of all Dharma, and which ordain the rules of life for all the varying castes of men and for the different stages of their lives. In the first age, men by the practice of Yaga and Yajna prescribed by thee were virtuous and pleasing to Devas and Pitris. By the study of the Devas, by the study of the Vedas, Daya dhyana and tapas and the conquest of the senses by acts of mercy and charity men were of exceeding power and courage strength and vigor adherence of the true dharma wise and truthful and of firm resolve and mortals though they were they were yet like devas and went to the abode of the devas kings then were faithful to their engagements and were ever concerned with the protection of their people upon whose wives they were wont to look as if upon their mothers and whose children they regarded as their very own. The people too did then look upon a neighbor's property as if it were mere lumps of clay and with devotion to their dharma kept to the path of righteousness. There were then no liars, none who were selfish, thievish, malicious, foolish, none who were evil-minded, envious, wrathful, gluttonous, or lustful, but all were good of heart and of ever blissful mind. Land then yielded in plenty all kinds of grain. Clouds showered seasonable rains, cows gave abundant milk, and trees were weighted, weighted with fruits. No untimely death there was, nor famine, nor sickness. Men were ever cheerful, prosperous, and healthy and endowed with all qualities of beauty and brilliance. Women were chaste and devoted to their husbands. Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, and Shudras kept to and followed the customs, Dharma, Yajna of their respective castes and attained the final liberation. So she goes on. After the Krita age had passed away, thou didst in the Treta age perceive Dharma to be in disorder and that men were no longer able by Vedic rites to accomplish their desires. For men, through their anxiety and perplexity, were unable to perform these rites, these rites in which much trouble had to be overcome, and for which much preparation had to be made. In constant distress of mind, they were neither able to perform nor were willing to abandon the rites. Having observed this, thou didst make known on earth the scripture in the form of Smriti, which explains the meaning of the Vedas, and thus delivered from sin, which is cause of all pain, sorrow, and sickness, men too feeble for the practice of tapas and the study of the Vedas. For men in this terrible ocean of the world, who is there but thee to be their cherisher, protector, savior, their fatherly benefactor, and lord? Then, in the, Dvapara, in the Dvapara age, so now we're in the Bronze Age, 
when men abandoned the good works prescribed in the Smritis and were deprived of one half of Dharma and were afflicted by ills of mind and body, they were yet again saved by thee through the instructions of the Sangita and other religious lore. Now, she goes on, now the sinful Kali age is upon them when Dharma is destroyed. An age full of evil customs and deceit. Men pursue evil ways. The Vedas have lost their power. The Smritis are forgotten, and many of the Puranas which contain stories of the past and show the many ways which lead to liberation will, O oh Lord, be destroyed. Men will become averse from religious rites, without restraint, maddened with pride, ever given over to sinful acts, lustful, gluttonous, cruel, heartless, harsh of speech, deceitful, short-lived, poverty-stricken, harassed by sickness and sorrow, ugly, feeble, low, stupid, mean, and addicted to mean habits, companions of the base, thievish, calumnious, malicious, quarrelsome, depraved, cowards, and ever ailing, devoid of all sense of shame and sin, and of fear to seduce the wives of others. Vipras will live like the Shudras, and whilst neglecting their own sandhya, will yet officiate at the sacrifices of the low. They will be greedy, given over to wicked and sinful acts, liars, insolent, ignorant, deceitful, mere hangers-on of others, the sellers of their daughters, degraded, averse to all tapas and vrata. They will be heretics, impostors, and think themselves wise. They will be without faith or devotion and will do japa and puja with no other end than to dupe the people. They will eat unclean food and follow evil customs. They will serve and eat the food of the shudras and lust after low women and will be wicked and ready to barter for money, even their own wives, to the low. In short, the only sign that their brahmanas will be the thread they wear. Observing no rule in eating or drinking or in other matters, scoffing at the Dharma scriptures, no thought of pious speech ever so much as entering their minds, they will be but bent upon the injury of the good. So it sounds a little bit like we're mostly close to this Kali Yuga age. The text goes on and Shiva describes the various rites and rituals, the mantras and the yantras that people can do to surpass this age, this, this Kali Yuga age. So based on this, the text is divided into various chapters describing the mantras, the rites and the rituals that people can use to essentially survive this Kali Yuga, this age of ignorance, and to be able to achieve liberation. There's even a chapter on the correct consecration of a Shiva Linga, which I recently talked about on my Instagram. Thankfully, Sir John Woodruff has created an English translation of this text. There's really a lot of content to it, and a, there's a lot of Sanskrit which may be confusing to people, but you will still be able to understand and acquire different practices that you could incorporate in your own practice if you feel called to. And really just reading this text, you feel this sense of peace and, and love. It's just the words are infused with love and with so much power. So I'm going to read a few of the passages which I really liked. Thou devourest Kala, which means time. Thou art Kali, the original form of all things. And because thou art the origin and devourest all things, thou art called the Adya Kali, resuming after dissolution thine own form, dark and formless. Thou alone remainest as one ineffable and inconceivable, thou having a form, yet art thou formless, though thyself, without beginning, multiform by the power of Maya, thou art the beginning of all, creatrix, protectress, and destruct destructress that thou art. 
Hence it is, O gentle one, that whatsoever fruit is attained by initiation in the Brahma mantra, the same may be had by the worship of thee. Typically, in a lot of tantric texts, it's very secretive, and there's punishments and threats of anybody sharing any of these powerful rituals and rites that are shared in these in these texts because of the power that they yield and the um, the desire to keep these powers away from the wrong hands and from people who may misuse them. But in this text, it explains how the Kali Yuga is such a difficult time and of it's of such importance that these teachings are shared during this time that it doesn't matter to listen to what was said before and in fact this should be worshipped openly and this should be shared which I find to be very interesting for this time because we do see that a lot of texts are coming to light and a lot of medicines and things that were obscure before are being shared now more conventionally. So in this passage, Shiva says, Truth is the appearance of the Supreme Brahman. Truth is the most excellent of all tapas. Every act is rooted in truth. Then truth, there is nothing more excellent. Therefore, has it been said by me that when the sinful Kali age is dominant, Kaula ways should be practiced truthfully and without concealment. Truth is divorced from concealment. There is no concealment without untruth. Therefore, is it that the Kaulika Sadaka should perform his Kaulika Sadhana openly? What I have said in other Kaulika Tantras about the concealment of Kaulika Dharma not being blameworthy is not applicable when the Kali age becomes strong. So if you feel called to, I recommend taking time to look through this text. There's a lot of hidden jewels of wisdom and things that you will not find conventionally. You won't find it anywhere by Googling or by looking to popular knowledge because these are sacred texts. There's magic in them. There's ritual in them. And there's really love weaved into the words. So... If you feel called to, check it out and dive into the text and see if you feel called to implement any of the practices in your sadhana, in your yoga, in your practice, in your meditation. There's so many techniques and they're all prescribed for different ailments, different types of people, different issues. Just wanted to give a quick short summary. Hope you guys liked this video. If you want more in-depth information on these texts, please follow me on Instagram and join the Scarlet's Tantra Cafe Facebook group where we go more in-depth and it's easier to dissect these texts and have discussions about them. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.